Ian's Ballad is here. So join me as I break down one of the most fun events in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms gameplay episode from your very own Shappy Gaming. Today we are going to be breaking down Ian's Ballad, I'm going to be playing through it, showing you guys some of the tips and tricks that I use to beat this event quickly and easily. So with that, let's hit the go button. As you can see, you can get some great rewards from here. You get a bunch of these chests. You can get some equipment material chests. Uh, it's really, a, I think, a pretty fun event uh, for not too much. Uh, you can see that I'm playing it on Hell, uh, which is the highest difficulty, but it also has the best rewards. And so if you've watched my previous videos on like uh, the Karak Ceremony, then you know that you want to go with the highest difficulty because that's how you're going to get the best rewards. Now, as you can see here, uh, the conditions for hell are that your city hall has reached level 25 and that your powers reach 40 million. If you do not have T5 and you are playing through this event, you need to have max commanders or you need to be playing with some people that do have T5. Uh, I will point out that they've made it a little bit easier now because I believe you can have five people instead of four. Uh, but I'm just going to go through and show you some of the tips and tricks that I have. Um, you can pick your different skills here. So you can play as DPS, you can play as support, and you can play as tank. Because this event is fairly easy, you really don't need to play as support or tank. If you want, you can have one person play as the tank, uh, especially if, if you're playing and you don't have T5. That is potentially useful. Um, usually I'll go with Savage Attack, Controlled Rage, and the Healing Buff uh, if I'm playing. But if you're going to be Tank, then I would probably go with uh, these three, which is the Taunt, Shatter Armor, and then the Emergency Healing. And if you're going to be Support, again, it really does not matter. Um, but I would probably go with, ooh, let's see. I would probably go with Healing Light, actually. Um, heal everyone quickly. I guess you're stuck with Dazzling Light too. I really would not play a support in this game mode personally. Uh, so I'm gonna be DPS and uh, let's, let's talk about this. So this is a mini game in Rise of Kingdoms where you actually will go through and you'll fight these three different bosses. The bosses do have random skills that changes every single time Ian's Ballad comes around. So sometimes the bosses are gonna be stronger than others. Um, there are some tricks that I'm going to show you guys today of how to beat this event very easily um, without a lot of difficulty. So there are some rules here. If you'd like to read through them, you can. But again, the goal here is to beat this event quickly, easily, uh, without too much problems. So let's, let's go for a random match here, and we should wait, and hopefully this doesn't take very long. You can have five players, uh, and I would recommend that you do this with five players if you can. Uh, it's really going to treat you best here, but as you can see, I've matched up with people very quickly. They have not changed their skills. Personally, I would not use the Meteor Strike. I'm not crazy about it. I think the uh, the Savage Attack does a lot, a lot more damage in the long term. And let's ready up. So a quick tip for you guys, you can click through this if you want. I like to skip it. And what you're going to do when you're starting is you're actually just going to look up here for one of these. And this is a resting campsite. And you need to get these in order to respawn after you lose to the bosses. Well, Shappy, I'm not going to lose to the bosses. You are. And I will point out, you don't need to fight these Blood Fury Riders. The goal, again, is to beat the bosses as quickly as possible. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to get to the resting campsites right over here. And then we're just going to let our marches die. Um, we're not going to do it at the first campsite. But as you can see, resting it will make it so I can respawn there. And then we'll go to this one, which my teammates are already going to, and they're gonna unlock this resting campsite. And by unlocking this resting campsite, they will then make it so if they do die, they can respawn right there, and the boss is going to be right here, as you'll see in just a second. And I did think that it would be better if I actually played through this and showed you guys exactly what I was talking about. Now, I would recommend you use faster marches here. Uh, probably cavalry are going to treat you best just because it makes it a lot easier to just run through this without any issues. As you can see, our first boss is here, and we've brought a whole bunch of random Blood Fury Riders, and this is why we actually all need to die. And the reason for that 
is that by dying, all of these Blood Fury riders and Blood Fury drinkers are actually going to go back to where they were before. And so by doing it this way, uh, we've made it so we can respawn, kill the boss really easily. Now, if you do have a really strong set of people, then you can actually unlock the resting campsite and then just try, just try and beat the boss. If you fail, that's okay. I will say if one of your teammates has died and they didn't really get to touch the boss at all, um, you're probably better off not beating the boss because they will not get rewards. So just keep that in mind. As you can see, we're tearing through this guy, not having too many issues. And it looks like there's a reward chest over here, is there? Nah. So yeah, all of us are going to die here most likely. And that's okay. Uh, you really do. You want to die here because then all of these lovely enemies are actually just going to go away. And you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and this also means you don't have to grab any of the runes. Uh, there are runes, which a lot of people don't know, right over here. So once you get through this first gate, if you go to the right, you'll see there are a bunch of runes. Okay, now I'm getting, I'm getting beaten by them, which is good. And you don't need those runes. Uh, I remember the first time I played through Ian's Ballad, I was like, oh yeah, you know, this is going to be really tough. And I went through and it took me 20 minutes at least to beat all of these different individual uh, enemies. And it was terrible. And then I discovered this trick that you can do where you just sprint your way through and then you don't have to worry about it. See, as you can see right here, all of these enemies are going away. And my teammates are now respawning. I will as well. We're going to march. Let's use Till and Nevsky. I would recommend you use a march with Nevsky in it because Nevsky does have that swarm uh, skill, which makes it so uh, enemies that are being swarmed take more damage, and that does apply to these. That said, I'm not sure that peacekeeping commanders do, um, so I, I probably would go with a, a march with fairly high DPS uh, and active skill damage if you can. If you can't, that's okay too, but that would just be my recommendation. As you can see, now that all of these enemies ran home, we didn't have to fight them, no problems whatsoever. Now we're going to easily beat Hunts, Huntsmaster Kikara and uh, claim our first set of rewards. There are three sets of rewards, each for each of the bosses, and you claim them immediately after going through here. So I guess I'm gonna be the one claiming them because none of my teammates will. And what you'll see in just a sec as my teammates are gonna march on through there is that there are the runes right over there. And here's our first round of rewards. So as you can see, I got two of those nice choice chests and a bunch of epic materials. So do not skip Ian's Ballad. It is, it is a great event, really easy. If, if you're turned off by some of these events because of uh, Golden Kingdom, that's totally okay. I feel that. Uh, but Ian's Ballad is definitely an easy one and one worth doing, I would say. Now, I will show you guys just because I'm over here. There are some guardians over here, and I'm probably going to just show them and then leave. These guardians will drop runes if you want. I don't want them, and I will point out to you that those runes do not last a very long time. I believe if you die once you get one of those runes, it actually goes away. So if you're doing this strategy, those runes are not going to be worth anything to you, so I'd probably just skip them. So now we unlocked our next checkpoint there, which is going to be right up here, the resting campsite. And let's see if I can get over there. I might be able to. Let's hope. Let's hope. Oh man, Maka is not very strong. Come on, Chappie. Move it, move it, move it. Yeah, these XYs deal a ton of damage. Go, Shappy, go. Go, Shappy, go. There we go. Whew. There we go. And we're actually going to beat Maka even with all these enemies over here, which is great. Now, let's hope that I actually do get rewards here. Uh, we'll probably let ourselves die, which is okay, because we need all these guys to go away. But we did beat Maka, which is kind of neat. There it is. Let's grab that. Nope, we're dead. <laughs> Let's hope that I actually got the rewards. And yeah, it's the same strategy throughout the entire thing you're going to play through. You're going to let all the enemies kill you, and then you're going to go home. And this is actually going to make it the fastest and easiest way for you to beat Ian's Valid without really any issues at all. Uh, so... We're gonna let all these guys go home. And as you can see, we've all summoned in. We're doing great. Come on, go home. And probably gonna grab the reward chest for us. And let's hope that I got some. As I mentioned, if you do not contribute to beating the boss, you will not get rewards. And so 
That is the danger with this. If someone dies and they didn't touch the boss, then some of your teammates don't get rewards. Yeah, see, here you go. Cannot get rewards as your contribution points take up less than 1%. But I got some, thankfully. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. Yep, Toxic is mad. <laughs> so something you can do here is there is a trap here. Uh, and you can actually just trigger the trap and sit right here. The reason you want to sit right down here or on one of these two sides is that the boss is going to spawn right here. And you don't want to be right where the boss spawns. Otherwise, you will not have the ability to camp and heal before you actually have to fight the boss. So just something to keep in mind as you go through this is there is some strategic placement and Toxic actually left, which I, I don't blame him. Um, there is some strategic placement to beating this. Now, this is a great example of what I was saying here, where if you do have four people, you can beat it. Uh, it's not as easy. Granted, we have two XYs and a Boudicca. I'm sure we'll be fine. But you you do typically want to have five people. It just makes it a little bit easier. It takes less time. Uh, but we're just going to go through here, and we'll probably beat this fairly easily. And as you can see, Ian's is definitely one of the shorter events. Uh, Golden Kingdom takes forever and gives, ironically, just about the same rewards. Um, Soroli is very similar to Ian's. I actually think I prefer Ian's Ballot to all of those others. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Uh, and if you have been enjoying, be sure to hit that subscribe button right over there, bottom right hand corner, and hit the bell so you get notified when new episodes come out. Now I am going to show you guys that there are lucky chests that show up when you do beat these grunts. Uh, and they're, they're a nice little bonus here. You'll get a little bit of gems, you get some res. Uh, it's not a bad deal, so we'll grab that. And as you can see, no gems this time, but that's okay. So let's keep on beating this. Again, this really is not a hard event, especially if you've got T5 marches with Max Manders. Even if you don't, uh, it's, it's not too bad at all. Um, I really do like this event. I, I think Ian's is one of the few that Lilith did well. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys dislike this event? Do you like this event? See, as you can see here, the boss is spawning now. And because we're over here, we actually don't have to worry about her coming and fighting us. If we were fighting in the middle, we would actually have to deal with the fact that she just spawned. And he's, okay, that's fine. So now we're going to beat the Flamebender. Now I will say that you can use Gilgamesh here, especially on her, because she does have a chance to heal herself. And as you know, Gilgamesh is actually gonna turn that heal around on her. But four marches, this is easy, no problem. Now, as I mentioned, these skills can change. And so, some some Ian's Ballad events may be harder than others because they might have an attack that'll stack and skill damage taken will increase for you. Usually that isn't much of a problem, especially if you have five marches, but if you are having issues, you may want to use a commander that clears debuffs. Um, I used to use Theo and Richard and play as the tank and that would be no problem. Uh, the attack to, oh, what? Ah, oh, see, that's the struggle here. Oh, well. Well, I'll have to play it again. But I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is one of my favorite events here. As you can see, you can claim your events and then move on. Oh, well, that was awesome. I hope that you've enjoyed. I know I have. Thank you. Shappy out.